Hi everyone, I'm the Plant Propagator and welcome to my channel. Today it's yet another sunny, warm and humid day here in Southwest Florida. It is 91 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 33 degrees Celsius. It is 104 degrees with the heat index. That's what it feels like uh, Fahrenheit, uh, which is 40 degrees Celsius. So it is another lovely day for the orchids here in Southwest Florida. What I want to do today, I'm, I'm behind the camera, and what I want to do today is tell you and talk with you a little bit about roots and, and orchid roots. Now, I'm going to come at you from a little bit of a different angle here. Uh, I spent uh, the majority of my career as an academic plant scientist at a Midwest university, and I studied, um, I studied mostly, mostly soybeans, corn, wheat, um, you know, the Midwest crops. And I mean, roots are important, sure, but um, you know, they're below the ground. You can't see them. You can study them. You look at uptake. You look at a few different things. But um, as you can see from these these Vanda roots here, these are a little bit different from the roots that most people are used to from plants that grow in the ground. So these are epiphytic orchids and these are all Vandas, but uh, a lot of the epiphytic orchids will have similar type root systems. And it, it's just, I think when you, when you grow orchids and you're not used to them, you have to kind of change gears a little bit and think about these as and the root systems as very different from what you've worked with uh, in the past. There's some similar characteristics, sure, but there's so many things that are different. So I'm still learning about orchids and orchid roots and growing orchids, but uh, I, I, there's, there's a lot of interesting things. There's some similarities, but just a huge amount of differences uh, between these uh, epiphytic orchids and the uh, the plants that uh, that are grown in the ground that most people uh, grow and you know I still have both I still appreciate both but you have to think in different terms when you're talking about the root systems of orchids now the root systems of orchids as you might imagine are kind of an indicator in a window into into how these plants are doing so a nice uh, a nice root system on orchids uh, it kind of reflects the general nice health of the plant. So if you have a system like this where all the roots are alive and more importantly you look at these and you've got these green root tips here, that's, that's a good sign. What is going on in there? Well, yeah, these roots are photosynthetic. At least the tips are, at least that's obvious to this point. Uh, they, they're chlorophyll containing and studies have shown that they are photosynthetic so they do have that capacity how about the area behind those green root tips is that photosynthetic and what is what is that part of the root doing well the orchid roots are again it's a little bit of a different structure uh, with orchid roots what you have if you take a look at a cross section of an orchid root what you can see is the outer layers and then there's this um, layer called velamen that's uh, one to a few cell layers thick. And velamen uh, allows the absorption of water into that tissue. And there's some really interesting uh, cell wall components and, and functions of the velamen, but it's a very thin layer of cells that's on the kind of the outside of orchid roots, and this is all orchid roots, at least the ones that I have and the ones that I've seen, the, uh, the epiphytic types. Um, but what, what is happening is the velamen is a special water absorption part of the root. So if you spray, and I've, I've got a video of spraying of the orchid roots on, on some of these orchids that I've got mounted on the trees. What happens is the velamen saturates 
with water. The water gets into the velamen. It's dead tissue. It doesn't have any uh, protoplasm, any living material in those cells, but the, the velamen is a vehicle for the water to get into those that those layers of cells and then the velamen, those layers feed the inside, the area inside of that, which is the cortex, the cortical uh, cortex of the root. And that's a really large area of the root in, as you can see, in cross section. All right, and then what happens is the cortex then feeds the vascular system, which lies inside of that. And so that you get uh, water and nutrient transport in the plant. So the, the interesting thing is that the velamen kind of absorbs, it's, it's mostly a one-way street. It, the water gets in and it's absorbed in there. And what happens when you spray the roots of the plant, um, the water kind of fills up those cells and then they become uh, transparent. Whereas normally they'll, they'll be right it right, sorry, white, and you won't be able to see through them. But when you spray the plant, you can see that the, the water is taken up by the velamen, and then you can see the green underneath of the velamen in the, uh, in the cortex and inside of the root. So those are all the, the cortex, that's a living part of the root. Uh, it has photosynthetic capabilities, and you can see the green once you spray the outside of the root and you can see the green on the inside of uh, the root. So what's going on in here, it's interesting what's going on in here may be that because these roots are so, so far away from the plant, they do have their own photosynthetic capabilities and they actually conduct the same type of photosynthesis that the main plant conducts. The interesting thing, and I've talked about this previously, about photosynthesis in many of these orchids, is they have photosynthetic machinery that's very similar to what you find in cacti, which means that these uh, many orchids, over half of the orchids, are actually active in photosynthesis, uh, in, in their breathing and taking in CO2 at night. I know it's counterintuitive, but that's what goes on with over half of the orchids that are out there and, and and a lot of different cacti. So they have similar features. I don't, I don't want to get bogged down in that too much. Okay, so in addition to that, um, as you can see what these roots do, and I can get close to this root because it's a good example, is they obviously, and this root here, they obviously attach. So what's going on with this is that these things, they flatten out along the surface that they're attaching to, whether it's the bark of this Christmas palm or whether it's the medium that you have in your, po in your pot. Um, they flatten out along this surface and then they attach. The interesting thing is there are, the attachment mechanism is, is pretty interesting and it may be that there are root hairs, which is, which are associated with these that will kind of grab onto and attach and actually put out a type of glue that attaches and flattens these orchid roots to the tree. Anyway, it's, it's all, now, now I gotta back up. <laughs> Root hairs are also the major water absorbing and nutrient absorbing components of many higher plant roots terrestrials that are in soil. So uh, if you disturb a plant that's in soil, you'll break off a lot of the root hairs and you'll, you'll lose a lot of the water and nutrient absorbing capability when you damage those root hairs. And this is a little bit of a different situation here because you have the root hairs which, which attached and laid down a matrix and let these orchids stick to this tree. If you have roots that are coming out of the sun, that are just hanging in the air, they do not flatten out, they stay cylindrical, and they also do not produce root hairs. So really interesting differences uh, between uh, orchids and many other plants as far as the roots and how they grow. And again, understanding the roots is important because the roots indicate or are a measure of the health and the vigor of this plant. Uh, so if you've got a nice long root system, that's, that's good. And again, how are you going to restrict this to a, to a pot? Well, good, good luck with that. But you have to understand a little bit, like I said, about how these plants are growing uh, with this type of uh, root system. 
So one of the other things that I wanted to share with you is that as far as what are the important components of the roots and how, um, you know, and, and what you need for survival, I've heard people talk and I've seen online, um, you know, don't trust everything that you see and hear online. Uh, you can trust me a little bit, but, you know, check me out too. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Um, these, the, the, the cortex of the roots, in many cases, in orchids that are pot bound, the cortex will fall off. But people, it's interesting, I've heard people say that at meetings and, and online, that if, the, if that part of the root falls off, as long as the vascular system inside is intact, the roots are fine. And well, that's not the case, all right? If you've got the cortex, which is a living part of the roots, that is gone, that is, that is degraded and rotten, uh, the roots aren't, are just aren't gonna be very functional anymore. You still have the vascular system, which actually moves the, um, you know, the water and maybe some nutrients up and down um, in the middle of the root, but for the most part, it's not fine to have the cortex gone and the roots uh, kind of rotten away. So, um, you know, the root really should be intact in order to get the, the greatest functionality. So you need to have the, uh, you know, the velamen that is absorbing the water and the cortex that's transporting the water and then the vascular system, the xylem and phloem inside that's transporting uh, the, the, the nutrients and the moisture uh, within the plant. Okay, so that's all I have for today. I'm going to end up here showing you some of the some of the root systems on some of the orchids uh, that I have growing either on on trees or mounted or uh, in pots. And again, the good green tips and lots of new root tips is a in general indicator of orchid health. So pay attention to that as you're growing your orchids, even as you're shopping and buying orchids, you want to get the ones that, you know, that look nice, that have nice flowers and the leaves look good, but you also want to pick, I actually prefer to pick the ones that have the nicest root system and that's just me, but just kind of keep your eyes open and look at, look at all of that as you're, as you're purchasing orchids and as you're looking at your own orchids as they're growing in your collection. All right, so that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did and you wanna keep on seeing them, it would help me out if you can click on like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. All right, that's all I have for today. Again, I hope you enjoyed it and happy propagating.